So then guys, um, apart from the the, um, uh, the beard, I'm not growing a beard, I just haven't been asked to shave for the past two weeks, but I will be shaving tonight. So it's not that um, I'm getting ready for Father Christmas, it's just because I couldn't be bothered to shave. Anyway, anyway, back to more important matters. Gaming, retro, uh, YouTube, and doing uh, videos and little projects. Something that I have finally sort of got round to finishing, even though it's not 100% the way I want it to be, but it's gonna be good enough, and I could spend another six months trying to sort all this out. Okay, perhaps not six months, but... A video I did, Christ, we're going back nearly 12 months now. January, February, March something like that it was a bit of a teaser video and it was concerning a green perspex box with a circuit board in there and a number of you guys guess what that actually was and and yes it was a raspberry pi something i wanted to do was to have a play around with a raspberry pi and an emulation uh, just to go through a bit of a a sort of learning process for me really about understanding the raspberry pi uh, the emulators on there, setting everything up, getting it all running and so forth. And when I first started looking at it, uh, because these units are really, really cheap to buy, they're, they're sort of 25, I think I picked my Raspberry Pi up as the circuit board itself for 25 pound. And, and they're a pretty powerful, I wouldn't, okay, they've been, they've been termed as being uh, mini PCs or a little PC. I, I won't, I won't quite go that far, but I suppose they are really. I suppose they are, I suppose they are. Um, and I wanted to play around with it, see what it was capable of doing, what it wasn't capable of doing. I'm not, I'm not overly in, into, into emulation or so forth, but it was something that I just wanted to get my head around and just wanted to try different things. And the more and more I got into it, uh, the more and more I found uh, the need for me to be able to customize things on the Raspberry Pi. And this is concerning the front end. So the front end for the emulators. Um, and there's a lot of uh, images out there on the internet that you can download, stick them straight onto a memory card, throw them straight to Raspberry Pi, and it will work. It'll have all the ROMs on there. Um, and the actual, uh, the actual way that the front ends are presented are called themes. And the more and more I looked at the themes that were available, uh, the more and more I thought, yeah, they're not really that good. I want to actually do a theme myself. Or I want to rework some themes myself. And that's basically the rabbit hole that went down. And it was a long, long, long rabbit hole. And I put a lot of time into it initially, a couple of months. And then I just got bored and I thought, sod this, I can't be doing, carrying on with this. And more recently I've picked it back up again and I've now got it to a state where I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, and I thought I'd do this video to show you guys what I've done and, and what it looks like. First things first is the Raspberry Pi itself. Now, I've actually changed cases since uh, the first case that I bought and um, I suppose really because of all the all the Nintendo, I say all the Nintendo, there's been two Nintendo Minis that have come out. There's been a NES Mini and a SNES Mini, and you guys would be fully aware of that. Uh, what's recently come out is an actual case that's based on the NES Mini for the Raspberry Pi, and it looks absolutely awesome. I, I love it. I think it looks absolutely great. Uh, the build quality is, is, is fantastic. And that's the case there. It's actually called a NES Pi case. So it, it's, it, it's clearly based, or it's supposed to be a NES, um, and more so a NES Mini. But, but, the, but the build quality on it, and you know, it's got all the buttons on the front, uh, it's got two USB ports, and you flip up the cartridge port, and it's got some more USB ports, and your network uh, Cat5 connector. At the side, you've got a little hole there for the memory card. It's got the ROMs on there, what the actual uh, system software, etc. You've got a mini USB uh, power input. You've got an audio output, and you've got HDMI uh, output. 
and it's it's a real it it's it does look fantastic it really does uh, the cases aren't particularly cheap but i think they're worth it for what they are uh, this case cost me 30 pound if you're willing to wait a bit longer for delivery you can get them from china exactly the same case you get them for uh, between 15 and 20 pound i couldn't be asked to wait i wanted it uh, more or less straight away so as an actual unit so with this and the raspberry pi you're going to be talking around about 55 pound uh, you've got to go uh, you've got to buy a controller as well but i already had a controller usb um uh, xbox uh, 360 controller wired one uh, but you can use bluetooth on it they've got bluetooth on them so you can use bluetooth you can connect a a wii controller a wii u controller a playstation 4 controller and all sorts of different controllers if you're doing it via uh, the USB uh, ports uh, on the front. It's entirely up to you, but you've got a lot of flexibility there. So that is a a, a sort of quick run view of the run the through of the case with the Raspberry Pi in there. Like I said, I I, I think they look absolutely mega. I think it looks awesome, and it would look well in any any gaming setup downstairs in the living room, underneath the TV, whatever. It's and it's a nice unit. You know, you want to display this. It doesn't look crap. It looks really nice. Proper hard plastics. You know, and it's just built really, really well. It's not one of these cheap, nasty um, uh, 3D printed cases that you see. It's a proper, it's a proper manufactured case. Really, really, really good. Now, unfortunately, it's going to be absolutely utter ghetto. Um, I haven't got a capture card set up in this PC, so I can't do this in uh in pure digital mode so what i've actually done is i've taken uh, various elements from uh, from the internet uh, resource wise media and i put it all together in in my own theme for uh, the emulation and this first image i've actually got two images uh, this one is all of the retro consoles so we'll just see this boot up try and do this I've got to film because I haven't got my tripod out utterly unprofessional full high quality production values going on here guys <laughs> right so the way I've designed this is um, I've actually taken a set of themes that we use for something called Hyperspin. Uh, if any of you guys know about Hyperspin, Hyperspin is a PC-based emulation front end. And I really love the Hyperspin look and feel. And I've basically remastered all of the uh, PC-based Hyperspin themes uh, to make my own RetroPie theme. Now, I'm not aware that anyone else has done this, and if they have, it, it hasn't been shown on the internet so this is this is all mine uh, in respect of uh, me uh, remastering um, uh, original uh, hyperspin uh, themes for the use on the RetroPie system so I'm not going to go for everything but effectively what we've got here across the menu bar that I've created at the bottom of the screen uh, you've got the consoles and we've got loads of things on here I think it's something like 40 systems I've got emulated and uh, with real good ROM sets on each one so we've got various uh, Atari systems uh, ColecoVision Vectrex PC Engine oh, you've got a bit of PC Engine haven't you uh, PC Engine CD Super Graphics Turbo Graphics and Nintendo 64. Now all this stuff has took me so long to create, but I think it looks, I think it looks pretty awesome. And Nintendo, Super Nintendo, this system, Super Famicom, Neo Geo, 32X. 
Snake CD, uh, Genesis, Sega Master System, SG-1000, still going, Lynx, Wonder Swan, Wonder Swan Colour, Game Boy, your favourite, Game Boy Advance, and we're still going, a Game Boy Colour, Virtual Boy, Neo Pocket, still going, Neo Pocket Colour, Game Gear, Amstrad CPC, a Commodore 64, Amiga, Odyssey, MSX, MSX2, still going, Sinclair Spectrum, a television, how old's that? And finally, Nintendo DS. And each one, so if we just go over to, let's find a, a, a uh, right, no, 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 let's go to, let's go to PC Engine CD. And each, each sub theme, so each theme for each system, uh, looks like this. So you click on the actual system you want, and then it then goes through to uh, wheels. Wheels? It then goes through to the name, and they're called wheels. So you've got the, uh, the names of the games across the bottom, and then you've got the video uh, that shows the game uh, above it. Yes, yeah, so you can see what the game is, if you don't know what the Chinese is. Or Japanese, I should say, sorry. So if we just come out of that, and we go to, let's... I don't know, let's go to uh, Genesis, let's go to CD. I don't know why that monitor's coming with audio format, it's not being fed an audio signal. It does that occasionally, weird. Yeah, so you've got your various yeah, final fight on the... And if we click on that, so we'll have a look at playing that. So again, it comes up with splash screen. There's the old boot debris. Start that. And of course, oh, chair squeaks. And there is scan lines enabled. Can't see, it's not gonna focus properly, is it? But you can't have the solid, uh, Sprites on this, you've got the old scan lines, haven't you? The old scan line. Hoof. And everything plays as you expect to do on an emulator, you know? So that's the multi multi system image that I've created. And like I said, there is a load of emulators on there, and they've all got, apart from systems like DS, um, I think the DS is the only one. Everything else has more or less got. Uh, full ROM sets on them so there's a hell of a lot on that one image and it's 128 gig so it's a big image so I will now show you the other image that I've got right so this is the second image and and this is also 128 gig uh, image but this is rammed full of old arcade stuff so it's using MAME and also PlayStation 1 it's got a hell of a lot of PlayStation 1 uh, images on here. Um, I think it's something like 65 gig of PlayStation 1 images. That took me so long to get all that organised. Um, there's not a lot out there that you can just download for PlayStation 1s. Uh, you've got to make your own image up if you want your own games on there. So I've spent a long time going through and getting all the games that I wanted and creating them at my own uh, sort of ROM set really. And it's it's it, it's about 100 and, 160 ROMs or something like that, or 160 um, uh, disc images. Now this theme itself is 
is very, very different from the first one. This is effectively someone else's theme that I've just used um, uh, just to get this up and running uh, quickly with these two massive uh, sort of emulator and ROM sets. Um, I don't think I'm going to move it over to my uh, my previous design. I'll just stick with this one because it works. It's very simple and it's nice and clean looking. So, so all we've effectively gone on here is is two uh, systems. I got the PlayStation and Arcade. So Arcade is is using a, a version of MAME and there's 2,952 games there. And the PlayStation is 189. Sorry, actually more than what I uh, and what I said previously. Uh, but they all work very similar. So you know, again, you've got all your all your different uh, games. And of course, with the amount of games you've got on here, it'll take you a billion years to uh, sort of get through all these. But uh, and again, they all work uh, very similar to what you just saw in the previous image in the way that they come up. Um, let's uh, da, 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 back or back laid. All very boring main uh, main stuff, but again, scan lines are enabled on that. Um, uh, should have picked that one, should I? See, scan lines are on there. I can't say the point if you're going to emulate not having scan lines on, but it just breaks the image up a little bit. I think I just prefer the look of it. I know some people don't, but. Um, but yeah, so that's the arcade one, and the PlayStation one is all my my PlayStation one favourite games. You know, so Scan lines. Don't insult my eyes by not using scan lines. <laughs> but yeah, so it and it all works really well. Just come back out, go back to the main menu. Yeah, so you've got all the all the video images on here. Oh, sorry, goof that up. Fingers slipping. But yeah, so um, it was a bit of a mission getting all this done, but um, I've learned a hell of a lot, which was the main reason for doing it, to be honest. Um, you know, will I use it? Will I play it? <laughs> Doubt it, but uh, <laughs> it's been a worthwhile exercise really to learn stuff, but uh, yeah. Um, I know there's various you know, some guys don't like emulation and you know, oh yeah, well that's not as accurate as the wheel. I, I'm not, I'm not having any discussion here about emulation guys, you know, so you can save that for other people's um, uh, videos. Um, this is really just about the Raspberry Pi, what I've done with it and and what these units actually look like once they're all sort of set up and so forth. I think they're pretty awesome, you know, especially for the money. But yeah, anyway guys, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll speak to you again soon.